Hi there, this is Fred, FR5ED, with a beer review. This is going to be interesting, and the reason I mention that is because uh, I just now discovered who the brewing company is for, for this. This is Ass Kisser, or Beep Kisser, um, double IPA. I uh, have not reached for anything by this with this brand name on it yet at my local ABC. Uh, because a friend of mine who used to work there who's moved on at the time said this is a new one that's come in There's so many companies trying to do the craft brewing thing And this is just another one of those jumping on the bandwagon and it's not worth tasting Meaning, you know, that brand or that, uh, you know, ass kisser label period And I keep passing it up <clears throat> So I was putting together when I was there tonight Putting together, a you know, a, a six pack of individuals of different things I hadn't tasted yet and I thought you know well they've got a double IPA I might as well give that a shot I don't think I'd reach for the single IPA but at least maybe this will have some flavor to it and I'll review it and then we'll have it behind me <clears throat> and here was the shocker for me when I looked it up on Rate Beer and Beer Advocate um, and dug in and saw the brewing company if you'll go back and look at Beer review number 184 that I did uh, back in June, uh, early June, when I was in California, uh, specifically San Jose, California. Um, I was at a, a local um, restaurant there that serves up all the, you know, over several of the brews from this local San Jose, California brewery called Hermitage Brewing. Um, I loved, as you'll see in the um, and the review on on the uh, Super Hoptopia on cask that I had there, I loved it. You know, it was delicious. I wish I could get that all the time. It was wonderful. Partly, it was wonderful because it was on cask. It was closer to room temperature. It was, you know, unfiltered. It was, you know, cask conditioned. Um, and it just was much heavier mouthfeel, more flavor to it. Um, I love cask conditioned beers served up like that. Um, so, with that all being said... This very dist name, and by the way, the reviews on this particular one, on Rate Beer, after uh, 247 reviews, it rates a 67 overall and a 16 in style. On Beer Advocate, it rates a 76, which is okay, that's after 250 ratings, and the brothers only gave it a 70. So, you know... Going just by those ratings, it doesn't bode well, you know, compared to many others in the same style that, you know, do much better. Um, I mean, they give a long commercial description I won't go into, you know, just, you know, talks about what they used in it and pairs with these foods and put it in this type of glass, etc. So, that's, uh, that's three minutes worth of intro there, so I better move on. So, I'm, I'm this is going to be really interesting since... Going into this, I love Hermitage Brewing based on... I had sampled several several other... I had an IPA, I had a Stout, I had two or three others there, samples, when we went there. Oh, and I had another double IPA on my birthday there that I don't know if I reviewed. I'll have to go back and check. But um, anyway, so here's this not-so-highly-rated double IPA by Hermitage Brewing. So let's pour it into my IPA glass. It's very light. Very light colored coming out of the bottle. Oh, I'm gonna have to stop because this glass causes so much of a you know head to form and, and has decent head retention. I have to be careful. And this bottle is barely barely cool, so I'm glad. Okay, that's a first. I had a phone call while I was reviewing the beer, and it, it was a long phone call, and I don't remember where I left off. So. I can show you this. The head died way down, got great lacing. What are we reviewing? Oh, yes, Ask Kisser Double IPA. Well, now I can pour some more in here. I never got to the aroma. I think I was just saying I was looking forward to comparing this not so highly reviewed beer with uh, what I know about the company and what I've tasted already. Here we go. Oh, interesting. I'm getting not only kind of honey citrus, but lilac, floral. That's some of the most floral hops I've smelled. It's very delightful. 
floral, grassy, honey, citrusy, melon, and a lot of aromas, but that, that lilac type of flowery aroma is very different. I like that. Okay, let's see how that translates. Oh, by the way, the look, it's a hazy, uh, honey, light orange, light, 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 light amber, you know. So let's give it a taste. Interesting. First of all, it's perfect temperature. It's just shy of room temperature, really. It's cool, not cold. Very good. The mouthfeel is a little above medium, so you would want and expect, I would want that and expect that in a double IPA to have a heavier than normal mouthfeel. I wanted to have more body, you know, for it to be called a double. In my book, that's one of the, you know, check boxes for a double IPA is a heavier than normal mouthfeel. That being said, <laughs> Pliny the Elder, the number one double IPA in the world is not a heavy mouthfeel. It's a very clear, very, um, you know, it's a thinner. Uh, so, what do I know? Now, let me taste this again and tell you what I'm tasting. Still got that almost soapy, lilac-y smell. Very interesting, very nice. The hot bitterness is there, and again, I, I need to back off on emphasizing any IBUs, which I don't see any anyway, which is just as well. After um, Garrett Oliver, you know, was talking about that recently, that it, it's too subjective, and it just there's too many other factors that affect the perception of bitterness to rely on IBUs as a as an absolute. Anyway, what I'm tasting there's a touch of there's a, there's a malt flavor and touch of sweetness which I really like in an I, in a double IPA. Um I don't know that that the citrus flavors are translating the citrus aromas are translating into flavor. But I do kind of get that melon and lilac. Now, I don't get a soapy flavor, but the melon and lilac flavor kind of comes through. So there's a malt backbone, and there's a floral, you know, essence coming through in the taste. Okay, let me wrap up because this may have gotten pretty long going into two segments. I like it. Um, it wouldn't rank up there with one of it, Okay, I've had their, you know, Hermitage Brewing's double IPA called Super Optopia. Had it on cask. Granted, that had a lot of pluses in it, you know, in its favor because of that. Um, and I really ranked that up there as something I would get again and again. I uh, wish I had a keg of that at home. This, not so much. It's very different for a for an IPA, a double IPA. I'm sure there's aromas and flavors I'm not identifying there that kind of you know translate into different to me. Um, you know, it's more dry than sweet. I don't know that I would get this particular one again, but I certainly don't rain it a 16 in style. Um, they were 67 overall. I would rate it higher than that personally. You know, 76 on Beer Advocate. I don't know if I were going to rate it and give it a number on Beer Advocate. I'd probably give it more of an 80, a low 80s. Uh, hmm. Anyway, that's enough. Um, you know, if you've ever had anything else by them that you didn't like, but you do like IPAs and double IPAs, grab one bottle of this, try it. You may, you may like it. Um, I'm not going to go buy a six-pack of this or a four-pack or whatever it comes in. Um... But I wouldn't turn it down if offered it. I might order it if I saw it on tap somewhere. You know, it's uh, it's interesting. So anyway, Ask Kisser Double IPA, and it's 7.75% ABV. I don't know if I mentioned that before. It's seven. Yep, that's what they have. Okay, this is Fred, FR5ED, over and out.